Hey, Dad. It's hard to believe it's been five years since you passed away. Just a few days before that moment, I recall asking if you tried to make contact after you were gone. Your response was so typically you. What for? I'll be dead, busy pushing up daisies. Another thing that really summed you up was your directness. In your last days, I had a break from the hospital and had a tattoo done of a painted brushstroke on my foot, thinking it was done in your honour. Fresh from the tattooist, I visited you later that day, proudly showing this new addition, asking whether you liked it. Your response? A simple, no, but with a grin. I often think about when I had to read through all the eulogies for your funeral. I realise how much you've missed. Ethan celebrated his 18th and 21st birthday and now lives down the road from your home with his girlfriend, Holly. You would have liked her, Dad. She is an incredibly talented artist. Jack turned 18 and he's now driving. He'd be so proud of the young men that they've become. Compassionate, respectful and kind, Jack reminds me of you every day, both in personality and mannerisms. They both miss you dearly and we often talk about you. Shortly after your funeral, we finally hung the triptych painting you created. Among all of your other artworks, it's one of my favourites and I get to enjoy it every day. One of my fondest memories of you is from your final weeks, while you were still at home. I remember when you finally gave in and sat in the wheelchair Bigot had bought. Ethan and I spent the day with you, wheeling you down the street for a coffee. You kept waving your arms as if to point out the way, as if I didn't know. I threatened to let go of the wheelchair while you were down a hill and we both laughed. After coffee, Ethan played his guitar for you. A moment so special, he's never played for us before or since. On the Friday, we were supposed to bring you home from the hospital. Birgit had set up the hospital bed in the living area so you could see your garden. Your therapist also had arranged for a recliner and some other equipment from MND Victoria. You never got to see it. You passed away that Saturday, never making it back home. But I remember how grateful and surprised Big it was for the help and the equipment. And that's why I do what I do now, Dad. I lead the equipment service team at MND Victoria to support people living with MND and to keep your spirit close. I'm privileged to be a part of a wider team that contributes to so much vital care and support. It's not always easy. Sometimes the pain feels fresh but my heart remains there.